I mean, my mom's dad is is a doctor, still practices mm -hmm. in Los Angeles, um, and is really is is the guy I look up to. And I used to grow up going to his office, so I've always wanted to be a doctor. I went to medical school, and I thought I was going to be an orthopedic surgeon. Okay. And I realized that that's more carpentry. I like fine tuning work. I, I like to deal with very delicate, um, taking care of millimeters, not big. Mm. It, it, to me, it, to me, it's a. Uh, it's it's fine touches, not taking care of big, bulky, putting together a femur or a joint. Okay. We take care of everything from the head to toe, mm -hmm. and no other field does that, and it really is appealing to me. I do hand surgery, I do face surgery, I do facial fractures, I do burn surgery. We do everything from, you know, somebody who breaks their finger to wow. burns their finger, who cuts a tendon, who wants a facelift, who wants a breast augmentation, who wants a breast lift. Who wants a tummy tuck? Who wants liposuction? I mean, I can go on and on and on. You're doing the entire body. And we do everything. The needs are. And it's and it's great because every single day, if you walk through this office, the different types of patients that walk through here, it's you have everything from the uninsured because we do a lot of uninsured patients because we take call in, in the in in the emergency rooms, mm -hmm. people that fall and they hurt themselves, have facial fractures, they break the bone under their eye or they mm. break the bone up here or their jaw to people that come in for the breast dog, the 24-year-old girl who's looking to look a little better, you know? So it's nice to see a little bit of everything. You're not just stuck doing cosmetic, because that's not what I just want to do. Well, what we found over the years, um, you know, definitely plastic surgery has evolved. And I'm sure you've seen the average uh, Beverly Hills you know, 50 something oh. year old woman who's pulled way too tight. Yes. And we just learned that the, we don't age that way. You know, instead of aging horizontally, we, we realize that everything descends, everything mm -hmm. falls just due to gravity. Mm -hmm. And so we've kind of repositioned some of those areas back to where they should be. You know, with the advent of minimally invasive procedures, we tried to keep the scars as short as possible. And so now we can perform a, a complete mid and lower facelift through a small incision that's basically hidden up into the anterior hairline inside the ear mm -hmm. and then stop short just under the lobule of the ear. It usually is about 10 to 14 days where you really feel mm -hmm. uncomfortable, a little swollen, uh, sometimes a little bruised. Um, but usually at about two weeks, you're ready to head out into public again. Really? So you can actually go outside and get to work in two weeks from having... The short scar facelift. Definitely. That's incredible. Yeah, things have changed. Wow. We're in the age of an obese society. Mm -hmm. And now with the 1-800-GET-THIN and all the other lab band procedures, right. we're winding up with a, a very large population that's lost all the weight. Mm -hmm. Now they feel healthy, but they still have that extra skin. And the only way to get rid of that is basically to tailor it. And that's when we come into play. It's that's one of those uh, again one of those evolving fields over the last ten years, mm -hmm. and we've really found ways of tailoring the body, you know, tastefully mm -hmm. while hiding the incisions uh, in areas of creases and things like that that are, are not as visible. I, I actually started off wanting to be a trauma surgeon. That everyone around me didn't seem very happy, and then this <laughs> this plastic surgeon came in. Uh, who took care of all the reconstructions and trauma. Always well-dressed, he had a smile on his face, he was happy to be there, and I said, this, this guy's on to something. Uh, he took me under his wing, and then I went for plastics ever since then. So as far as cosmetic surgery, I started off more reconstructive, mm -hmm. and then found that I had an aptitude for a, a little bit of, uh, of artistry. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the most important things for a patient is to become extremely, uh, I guess, you have to feel very comfortable with someone who's going to, mm -hmm. to put their life in your hands. Uh, and basically, for a lot of the cosmetic surgeries, these are elective. Someone who is electively placing themselves in your hands. You have to feel very confident and, and very comfortable. And I think I tend to make people feel at ease mm -hmm. in that situation. Um, you know, Payman and I definitely complement each other. We have two different personalities mm -hmm. uh, that seem to, in the operating room, they seem to just blend mm. and they seem to be only additive so that's why we uh, that's why we started this and that's why we continue to, to do well I mean there's always going to be those patients who have what we call body dysmorphic disorder right. uh, where they see something that clearly everyone else doesn't 
uh, you know, we can always critique ourselves. Uh, and it's our job as plastic surgeons to try to improve whatever deficiencies a person may have. Some of the times the smallest little defects can become the biggest problem for someone. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, uh, you know, there's only so much that you can correct. Uh, you know, if the person just doesn't see it, you know, then I don't have the skill <laughs> that you require. Um, you know, we take call at some of the local hospitals and we do a lot of pro bono work for those who, patients who don't have insurance. They get into accidents, uh, if it's an unfortunate accident, car accident or a bicycle accident. Mm. Um, you know, we've had several patients who, you know, those weekend warriors that get out there with power tools and, mm. and uh, end up hurting themselves more than accomplishing their work. You know, we'll take care of them. Um, the other organization that, that we're involved with is Interplast, mm -hmm. which is actually uh, larger than Operation Smile. Uh, mm -hmm. It was it started before Operation Smile. We do cleft palates and burn surgery and and reconstructive surgery. We take care of anybody who comes our way who doesn't have money, who doesn't have the funds to take care of any traumatic event that they've had. I mean, obviously, cosmetics is a different story. Right. But. Uh, you know, any kind of trauma, anything that comes to the emergency room, other doctors don't want to do it, they know they can call it. Again, I, I really would like to emphasize the fact that you have to feel very confident and uh, very comfortable with, us, with your particular plastic surgeon. And I think having the two of us here definitely can accomplish that because you've got two separate personalities and uh, we seem to, to mesh with almost all of our patients. So, uh, you know, I think that's very important. When you disagree on something, you sort of like harmonize and, and figure out what's the best direction and then who takes the oh, lead absolutely. on that. Absolutely. That's what's so nice. Mm -hmm. You get to talk things out. You go over. We, you know, when it comes to a cosmetic case, we'll put the picture up and we'll really talk to each other like we're residents again, like we're going over a conference of what we should do with this type of patient. Whereas if you were by yourself, you would look at it, you'd go do it, mm -hmm. and you're done. And, and I think it, it continually makes us grow as plastic surgeons and as and as people you just look at things in more than just one way you're not just stuck in your way and that's the only way and i think that's really great because it keeps you honest okay. continually and it's good because you have good cop bad cop <laughs> well i'm i'm just fascinated I, I got so much information and i like the fact that it's not just about cosmetic surgery for you guys it's about the whole body yeah. from you know disfigurement to scars to a beautification and taking that whole package really makes a difference so with that said you know i want each of one of you to tell us your mission statement and your passion and what drives you to continue your work and what keeps you motivated to do your work. You know, our mission statement has become uh, care without compromise. And uh, I think we'll go to any lengths just to ensure that patients receive the, a natural uh, result, but yet a result that they're looking for, that they're going to be happy with. You know, it's funny. We did an interview bef before we came out into practice. And the person who interviewed us said, you guys finish each other's sentences. And when you asked that question, I was going to say exactly <laughs> verbatim what he said. But it's really true. We're out here to provide a service, but at the same time, we really want to go above and beyond the call of duty to be there for everybody at times of need and when people really need it for other reasons, whether it's beauty mm -hmm. or whether it's trauma or whether it's something that's congenital that's from birth. So okay. we really want to be there for everyone at all times. Well, I had a great time interviewing these amazing doctors, and this is Joy Paris with Rich Girl Network TV, and thank you so much.